Hi, this is Jeff Ong from Dr. Wealth. Today, I'm going to talk about ways to raise funds for property investment. First, a disclaimer. Often I'm asked, Jeff, how do I raise money for that deposit or to buy the entire house? Now, these are the ways to raise funds. Mortgage. With a conventional mortgage, you are expected to bring 20 to 25% of a property's valuation as deposit while getting a maximum of 75 to 80% mortgage from the bank. The banks will review your credit history, income and assets before determining if you are eligible for the mortgage. Rental income from the property may be included in the bank's calculation of affordability now, which also means that you should keep your job and maintain a salary and clear your bills as fast as you can because you want to get a very good credit score. Now, there are two types of mortgage. The first type is principal plus interest repayment, which is the amortizing mortgage. The second one is interest only. Now, amortizing mortgages have their pros and cons, and this is what most Singaporeans go through, which is amortizing mortgage. One advantage is that you pay the loan down. And because it's amortizing by the time after a couple of years of servicing the loan, your net asset actually builds up. It doesn't matter if the property price is flat, declining or rising, you generally do pay down the loan and your asset, your net asset values go up. Now, the cons of an amortizing loan is that oftentimes because the debt obligation is much higher than an interest-only loan, your monthly repayment is quite large and your rental income may not be enough to service the amortization. Now, in times where there are uh, void periods, it makes it even worse and sometimes you may not be able to repay fully or part, even part of the obligation. Now, once you miss a payment or you pay less than what you're supposed to, it triggers an alarm bell with the bank. And of course, they will investigate and you may be asked to top up. Now, interest-only loan is what I prefer. However, it can only apply to cities or places or countries where the population is growing and the jobs are growing, incomes are growing. You cannot apply in a place where there's deflation. So think of countries where deflating like Japan, I would not be using interest only loan. Now, the key advantage is to let inflation increase the value of your assets and economic growth will drive and salary growth drives up the, the valuation of the property while your interest or your debt remains the same. Now, the other advantage, of course, is that because your obligations are much lower, you are likely to have a bigger buffer. And in terms of, in times of void periods, you will continue to service the loan. And if you're able to do that, the banks will usually not ask you to top up. So in my view, oftentimes it's less risky if applied in the correct areas. Now, some countries have estate duty taxes. So, in a amortizing loan where you pay down the loan, the net asset is actually can be quite large. So because the liability and the asset value, because the liability has been paid down, there's a lot to tax on. Whereas an interest-only loan, uh, when you borrow, the debt remains the same and the asset value goes up. Oftentimes, the net asset is less. And if you refinance periodically to take up money to expand your portfolio, the taxable amount is even lower. Next. To release equity from your home, if you, your own home has increased sufficiently in valuation, you may be able to release equity from it. Equity is a difference between the current value of the property and the debt you still owe. Example, if your property is currently valued at $800,000 and you have an outstanding mortgage of $400,000 on it, your equity is 800,000 minus 400,000, which is 400,000 at 80% LTV or loan to value ratio. The bank may lend you an additional 80% of 800,000 
which is $640,000 minus $400,000, which is $240,000. And this additional $240,000 can go towards the deposit of your next property investment purchase. Now, in my course, I teach an advanced strategy where you force a capital appreciation. And I always believe that profit or equity is made when you buy and not when you sell or even uh, when you hold it with time. Now, with houses, oftentimes you can force a capital appreciation by uh, extending the bank, okay? Adding square footage to your house, refurbishing your kitchen, your, your toilets, and that's number one, to add square footage. Number two is that you can buy a house and split it into flats. Sometimes a 2,000 square footage house can be made into three apartments of 700 square foot each. Or you could buy a mixed development with commercial uh, shops below and two levels of flats above and you could split titles and sell it or rent it. And these are the, the asset enhancement strategy where you can force a capital appreciation. Savings. Savings is the safest way to raise funds, but it may take the longest time unless you invest your savings in more liquid assets like stocks. So my advice often is that you must be good in stocks, investing in stocks and property. And when I started out in my 20s, I took up courses and signed up for mentorships of uh, stock traders and investors so that I could double my returns pretty fast. Otherwise, I'll be getting 8% a year instead I'm getting 15 to 16%. So you need to decide on your savings target, which is your deposit, which is often 20 to 25% of property prices plus your fees, which could be added to be 30% to 35% of the value of the house as a deposit. Work out how much you need to save each month and how long it will take for you to reach your goal. Make a budget, be disciplined about it, make changes that could have a larger impact. For example, you could move back to your parents, cut back on your holidays, all bonuses go straight to savings and not buy that car or buy a smaller car. And that being a little bit of changes to your lifestyle often helps you to save more and towards the deposit of your house. Now, borrowing from family, the bank of mom and dad is becoming more popular with those who may not be able to obtain a conventional mortgage. The advantage is number one, oftentimes the interest rates are lower, it's negotiable. It could be as low as 2% to as high as 8 And number two is there's flexibility in paying back the money. So for example, when you, are, you need uh, to borrow from your parents for the deposit, you could need up to 30% of the value of the property. And... Um, as you are doing asset enhancement, it could take six months to a year, and then you can seek a, a mortgage, a traditional mortgage, which is about one to two percent interest in Singapore. In some countries, it's as, it's as high as three to pay off to replace your, your mom and dad's loan. Now, the benefits to the lender is. Of course, you achieve a higher rate of return than what you get from savings rates, which are actually close to zero and generate a steady stream of income. <clears throat> it's wise to get a lawyer to help draft an agreement, particularly the agreement is not between immediate family members. So remember, anything can go wrong and always expect and be prepared for the worst, even though you're hoping for the best. Next. Joint ventures. If you wish to partner with someone on a property project, it may be a friend who will provide some of the funds or an acquaintance who will provide most of the funds. The JV structure is very important. The JV should be fair. It must recognize the contribution from each person. And oftentimes there are people with money, but no time. They may be working. They may be doctors and professionals or business people. They may not have the knowledge or the interest to learn about property investing. However, you may have the time, you may have attended courses, you have the knowledge, but and you have the time, but you do not have the money because you're young. So you could do a JV and some of the common structures are 50-50. The person who finds a deal and does all the work gets 50% of the cash flow and the person who funds the deal 
uh, which is often a passive investor gets 50%, or it could be 60, 40, depending on who does what. Uh, there are other more advanced structures, which I can share in my course as well. So JV is definitely a very, very good way for uh, people who started, or even for people like me who have owned a portfolio already. And I want to go as a team because teamwork helps and all of us have our different uh, our expertise as well. So we can spread the work and rely on each other's strengths to expand our portfolio. Lastly, bridging finance. Uh, you could borrow 90% of the purchase price from a bridging lender, usually about 8 to 12% per annum interest. Uh, refurbishment to push up the value of the property. And then you refinance with a conventional mortgage provider at a higher valuation or lower interest rates and pay off the bridging loan with the higher interest rates. So the benefit is use very little of your own money as most of the money needed to acquire the property comes from the bridging lender. But the cons is that may not be able to get a conventional mortgage if the property valuation does not go up sufficiently. So I give you an example. For example, if you spent $1.5 million on a property and $500,000 on a refurbishment, hopefully the valuation has gone up to $2.5 million. And if the bank lends you about $1.5 million, you have only got $500,000 left on the deal. And if the bridging loan is $1.5 million, you could pay it off completely plus interest. Now, if you do not do the refurbishment properly or you calculate wrongly, the $2 million gross development cost that you put in could result in a valuation of only $1.75 million. And in which case, the bank will only lend you $1.2 million and you have $1.5 million of bridging loan, which means that you have $300,000 short. And the interest could skyrocket very easily. Oftentimes, there's a step up and a penalty as well. So that's bridging finance for you. I've come to the end of my presentation. Uh, click on the link below if you're interested to attend my webinar to find out more. And I'll see you there.